movies, and there is really only one movie, Collie, that's sort of on the radar this month, which we're going to be talking about in a couple of minutes, and it is, of course... Come on, Rory, let's go party! <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. That doesn't <laughs> no, work. I'm not, I'm not that enthused no. about this whole thing. Well, it's my job, hopefully, to get you that enthused. But I suppose we, we, we move on to the, the main event, Barbenheimer Day on July 21st soon. I suppose we should maybe start off with with maybe the, the movie we talked most about mm. in the last couple of shows that we did. Yeah, let's have a look at Indiana Jones and The Afternoon Nap. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, well, I, I, Sorry, I've been waiting months to throw that yeah, one in. As, as a man who enjoys an afternoon nap myself, yeah. I, I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not. But both <laughs> of us, I think, shared the same feeling uh, of anticipation and dread mm -hmm. the last couple of months. We were saying, you know, it's great that Harrison Ford has taken one last swing at it. On the other hand, uh, what if it's no good? Mm. Like, the last one left such a sour taste in the mouth. And I watched it on... It came out on a Wednesday. I actually got to watch a preview of it on the Monday. And I feel this was kind of apt because it was the Monday after Glastonbury and I just spent the Sunday night watching Elton John belting out his greatest hits. Right. And I remember thinking at the time, OK, I'm sure Elton John in 1976 in Yankee Stadium, you know, when he was at the height of his powers, was a better singer and performer. But... It's, he was so good at Glastonbury. He gave the crowd exactly what they want. Oh, yeah. And it was a brilliant feeling of nostalgia and a, and a way to kind of say goodbye. You know, Elton John's far from done, but he's done in, in this sort of format. And a way to go, this is how you remember me. Mm. I'm still on the top and I'm leaving on my own power. <clears throat> so when I watched Indiana Jones and first 10 minutes of it, and I realised this is the same. They're, they're actually saying... Again, we're not leaving you that way. We can't leave you with crystal skulls. Here's all the stuff you loved. We're going to acknowledge that Indy is, is in his late 70s. We're going to acknowledge that he can't do everything anymore. The times have changed as mm -hmm. well. But we're going to give you all the stuff you like. Like, every punch has that same sound. But it's amazing. Sometimes, you know, somebody could be punched 18 times and they're still standing. <laughs> also... Indy needs a new uh, Nazi uniform to hide. He punches them once and they're unconscious. And that's the movie it always was. You know, it was always a bit silly. Do they have fun? That's that's the question because, you know, an Indiana Jones movie, you know, you know, well, you think you know or you know no. what you want from it. And, you know, it's, it's to go in and just to watch it and suspend belief, yeah. or suspend right. disbelief, and just have fun. Does the movie have fun? Within the first three minutes, ear to ear grain. Where they start off in the 1940s with the de-aged indie. There's a chase on top of a train. There's Nazis. There's bad guys. Mm -hmm. There's ridiculous stunts. Ear to ear grain. I, I where they have fun. I had so much fun. It was really just a wash, a wave of relief and joy washing over me. But what surprised me was there's a few poignant movies. Now, I know you think I'm a wuss at the best of times, but I did <laughs> kind of tear no. up a couple of times <laughs> in the movie because they acknowledge that times have passed and people who were in the original movies are no longer with us. Mm. And, uh, it, and that only works if you like the characters, if they've earned the right. It's not like forced sentimentality, which maybe mm. the last one had, you know, when Indiana Jones gets reunited with his son, you go, mm. I don't really care. Whereas this is all, they've earned these moments. So when something happens and Harrison is upset, or Indiana Jones is upset, you're kind of going, oh, I don't want him to be sad. And then the joy happens again. Every set piece is both a nod to the old movies, but also mm. not just repeating. They don't do the same thing again. They do the same sort of thing. Now, one criticism I've heard from some people, and it's it's actually kind of snotty movie critics, is the last, the end of it goes a bit odd. I, I was always thinking, do they forget that angels melt the face of Nazis in the in the first one? In the second one, there's exactly. voodoo, yeah. voodoo. In the third one, there's an uh, immortal knight guarding the Holy Grail. There was always that ended. Mm. So when it goes a bit mad, I thought they'd earned it. And you go, I'm okay with this because it's all B-movie nonsense. And that's what it always was. It's Indiana Jones. <clears throat> and, and, you know, that's what you expect from an Indiana Jones movie. And we're not, you know, we shouldn't be going on here expecting them to reinvent the wheel. No. You know, we want a good, old-fashioned, rip-roaring adventure. Yeah. That's what you sign up for with an Indiana Jones movie. But, I must ask as well, is the story any good? Yes, it is, it is good. It's as good as any of the other stories where he's looking mm. for a lost 
piece of archaeology mm. that's going to have some sort of properties. It, it is all chase scenes, which is pretty much all it ever was. But in the world of superhero adventures and things mm. like that, it's as credible as the Ark of the Covenant or it's as credible as the Holy Grail in The Last Crusade. The story is good fun. The writing is good fun. The, lo- the jokes are good. And it embraces its old-fashionedness. It doesn't try mm. too hard to say, oh, well, it's an audience in 2023. We can't make a movie or jokes mm. like we used to. It just falls into it and it's all the better for it. I really think, because you're somebody who likes retro, and I was talking to your little person outside, and I was saying, what <laughs> movies do you like? And she started saying, Ghostbusters. And, yeah. And it was all 1980, <laughs> Back to the Future. I said, what movie are you look forward to seeing in the cinema? She went, Back to the Future. I went, well, that came out in 1984, so yeah. that might be difficult. But we did get to see it in the yeah, cinema. Yeah, well, you did, yeah. See during lockdown, well, well, or that, during... Yeah. But there is no other movies being but, released. But for that audience as well, I think yeah. they'll really enjoy it. I think it was tremendous fun. I was so relieved. I mean, what, Final question on it. Where would you rank it now? So we've got one, two, three. This is number five in the series. Where would you rank it in terms of one to five? It probably is the fourth, but that's a high bar for me because I absolutely... Loads of people have gone off Temple of Doom, Mm. but I remember seeing it in the the green cinema in Dublin, which is no longer there. It's where the Stephen's Mm. Green Centre is, and they had couches. Now, they're almost certainly rat-eating couches, but they had couches at the back, and I thought this is the most amazing thing when I was about 10 years old. (laughs) And so that'll have a special place in my heart. So probably is the fourth, but it's a high bar. The gap between four and five is is like the Grand Canyon. Mm. So it is it is just but it's the end of the chapter. It is the perfect number four to end. Just don't watch the the other one. We just pretend it doesn't okay, exist. Just exactly sweep it under the yeah. carpet, right? So you'd rank it a high four. A high four, but it's really good. Okay. Of the movies I've seen this year, it would be in my top. Uh, definitely in my top ten, maybe in my top five. Oh, that, with, that's a big the, endorsement. Which is a, maybe a yeah. better way of putting it. Yeah. That's a big yeah. endorsement. All right, so that's Indiana Jones, not the and the <laughs> Dial of <laughs> Destiny, <laughs> not the afternoon nap. Yeah. Well, we hope, we hope. So that's in theaters now. Okay, now this is the big one. This is the one that you have been taunting me with for about six months now. Yes, Barbenheimer on the twenty first, <laughs> but particularly. The Barbie movie. Now, I have to say, I was uh, at a movie premiere on on Wednesday, and I was actually on the radio with with David. Now, you know, Rory, I was thinking of you the whole time. He meant nothing to me. But they they asked me to go on and and talk about... You need to put that in context, all right? Be very careful. But when I was on Jive Time, and I could see David kind of look at me going, oh, yeah, Barbie, as if anyone's going to be interested in that. And I tried to convince him because... I felt the same. The thing I compare it most to is when the Lego movie. When mm. I heard they're making a movie about Lego, I went, load of building blocks? That's going to be the worst movie ever. And then I heard a Barbie movie, and I went, oh, that's going to be stupid. And then as you said off air, then you hear Margaret Robbie's in it, and mm. you go, well, she wouldn't just do it for the cash. Like, she's at the t- height of her career. Exactly, and that, that's what I... Thought I thought when I heard about this movie, I thought that that sounds nasty. It's a cash grab, yeah. you know. Um, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, well, hold on a minute. Margot Robbie is, you know, she doesn't, you know, she she gets to pick and choose yeah. what she does now. She's not going to put herself in a position where she's associated to something that is complete trash. And there must be something. Yeah, a- absolutely. And then you hear it's directed by Greta Gerwig, mm. who made Lady Bird yeah. and made Little Women. Again, not someone who's just going to do a by the by the mm. uh, rote number movie. And then the first trailer came out, which was a parody of 2001: A Space Odyssey. And I really sat up in the cinema, and went, <laughs> "Oh, this is not what I expected at all." And I've seen, I've only seen a couple of trailers. They've been very low on on releases because they are very confident mm. that they have the movie of the year. And even if they weren't on social media, the buzz for Barbie. And the thing is, it is mostly female led, but the, it is for, both from twelve year olds to a lot of people who are a lot more than twelve. Everyone is is so excited. Mm. Uh, we've never had so many requests for posters, etc. Really? Oh yeah, and you think you know the Marvel geeks would have made that up? Yeah. No, and it is people who maybe don't go to the cinema that much, but are just determined to make an event of it because they've seen the couple of clips. Margot Robbie just has the face. It's the sort of gormless charm, and I don't mean that in an insulting way. Of as you would imagine, a Barbie doll would be. Yeah. But as then she starts to clearly, she finds herself in the real world. And that's where the adventure starts. And we've seen that. You know, that's not the most original story in the world, but it looks like it's so well done. Does it hark back to movies like uh, Mannequin? Mannequin, Splash maybe as well, yeah. You know, 
classic fish out of water, literally in splashes uh, way. It's it's that sort of uh, sense of humour, but also <laughs> done totally straight face, mm. totally deadpan, which kills me. I saw a clip of Ryan Gosling describing what Ken's real job is and I don't even want to spoil it. And I went, oh, this is really funny. <laughs> and it's all the funny because he's so serious when he's saying it. Have you seen anything beyond clips yet? This isn't out yet. No, so you it, haven't had a chance to have a no, sneaky look yet. No, on the 21st of July and they are holding their cards close to their chest because the, the industry buzz says this is the biggest movie of the year. It's going to be both the biggest movie money-wise of the year, but as in it's going to take the most money, but equally they think it, there's going to be mo most buzz about it because because it's so surprising. Because mm. all the people, and it's probably people like us, Rory, men who rolled their eyes and went, oh, yeah, silly Barbie movie, who have queued up for hours to watch like, people put on leotards and fight <laughs> crime. You know, <clears throat> but so it looks silly fashion movie. Uh, how, are getting their minds changed. They think it's going to be like such a crossover mm. appeal. And that, and like even it is a 12A, but I looked at the ratings and 12A said it's the mildest of 12As. It's okay. practically PG. So it's going to work for everyone. Um, It's going to be huge. The only thing I'm sad about is that we're not on air for, for that weekend because I definitely would have brought you to the premiere with me. Listen, we can check in. We yeah, can definitely okay, check yeah. in. <laughs> I, will, I promise I will text you. The second I see it, I will text you. If there's free I, food there, yeah. I am sold. <laughs> well, well, I know the, where I am, we're wearing pink all day. That's it. Uh, right, well, that may, might be step maybe too we'll far. have to, yeah, yeah, we might have to reconsider. Listen, we're going to take a commercial break. We're coming back. We're going to talk Oppenheimer and uh, Elemental and uh, maybe give Tom Cruise a little, a little mention as well. Back after this. <laughs> Joined in studio by Colly McFadging this morning. We're talking all things movies. And uh, so far we've uh, been talking Indiana Jones, Barbie. And uh, now we're going to uh, something a little bit more, something of, something of a shift. Yes. Well, one of the reasons I referred to Barbenheimer Day earlier, because uh -huh. also on the same day, July 21st, we get Oppenheimer, which is the new Christopher Nolan epic. And I mean epic. It's over three hours. It has a cast list. We don't have enough time to name all the cast. We'll be out of the show and into the news. <laughs> um, but Killian Murphy is the star. Is Robert Iman uh, Oppenheimer, who was the main uh, architect behind the nuclear bomb project, the Manhattan Project that created the first uh, atomic bomb, that were the ones that were dropped in mm. Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and <clears throat> was haunted by it his, his whole life and what he had to do to get this project together. It looks epic. There was a clip doing the rounds yesterday where they showed they still made it on film. Now, most cinemas here in Ireland will be showing it in digital, but there is film versions of it. 11 miles of film it took to, 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 to make it because he is old school. Christopher Nolan, directed, doesn't even own a mobile phone or a computer, apparently. He does everything analogue. And maybe that slight oddness is why his movies look different. Dunkirk yeah. looked different to anything else anyone's doing. Even his superhero movies like The Dark Knight, they were not the same as the other superhero movies we get. This looks fascinating. Apparently, it is... It's a not a, a tough watch is maybe the wrong word. It's an impactful watch. The reviews that we have heard, because everything is embargoed, but the reviews we have heard, like people, you know, were sitting there watching mm. the credits afterwards. Mm. Nobody was talking, you know. They needed time to kind of absorb what they just seen, which makes wow. me even more excited. <clears throat> and I know people, and part of the fun in advertising is Barbenheimer is Barbie or Oppenheimer, which type are you? I'm both. That's that's the joy of cinema to me is I will want the absolutely mind-blowing experience of Oppenheimer, pun totally intended, yeah. and also then the, the bubblegum fun of, of Barbie. Like, that's what cinema is. And, you know, and uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And it's been such a long time. We were talking about this earlier. It's been such a long time since we've had two juggernauts, you know. And, you know, yes, Barbie will be a juggernaut. Yeah. There's no getting away from yeah. that. And going head to head, because these are releasing on the same day. Nobody's backing down. Nobody's backing down. Nobody's going to blink first. Yeah, and they're, they're saying we trust, you know, we trust in our part. We are confident enough. We're not running away and hiding. Mm. You often hear those news reports where uh, they've moved a movie because mm. they just can't face up. They're going, no, cinema is f for both people. There are people who want to watch a three-hour movie, and there's people who want, want to bring the family. And both, both are equally valid. Mm. And what's even more amazing, and I, cause I know we're running out of time, we've got... A pre this week we've got a previous juggernaut of Mission Impossible Seven is is opening on um 
on m- this Monday, yeah. which apparently is is five stars all the time. Uh, Mark Kermode, one of my reviewing heroes, I can't even say what he wrote on his notes at the end, but it's it basically, <laughs> oh my God, for the final stunt. Apparently it outdoes Top Gun for stunts. Whoa. And that's out this week before Barbenheimer Day. I've been hearing a lot of good you know, things, <clears throat> a lot of good rumblings about Mission Impossible. And just, you know, just take a moment to digest this. Seven. Yeah. And it's seven. Th- they won't say seven because they don't like numbers, but it's Dead Reckoning Part One, which means we're getting another part. But it's it's the opposite too. And I, I enjoyed Fast and Furious, mm. but there's no part of watching Fast and Furious you go, I believe any of these people are doing any of this for real. <laughs> yeah. Whereas Tom Cruise did it. We see the making yeah. of where he he drove his motorbike off the side of the cliff. Yeah. Uh, it's so it's impressive. Not, it's not so much a case that you know they they at Tom, would you be interested yeah. in doing this? You know, is it no? I insist. I insist on doing it, and it wasn't good enough. I'll do it again. And you know, he believes he wants people to come to cinema. He doesn't want anyone to watch his stuff on streaming. Yeah. And he reckons the only way to do it is real mm. physical effects, because you can always see the computer. And stuff. he has a point. You know, Tom Cruise. Yeah. You know, whatever you might think about him, yeah. take him or yeah. leave him or whatever. But uh, you know. He does, you know, he he does put out good he, movies. Yeah, and top like Top Gun proved it. Top Gun last exactly. year changed people's experience of cinema. Yeah. People who thought maybe I won't go back after COVID, they thought it might be mm. James Bond that did it. It was Top Gun that did it because people walked out of the cinema and got. I haven't been in the cinema for years, but the, that movie would not have looked as good. I felt real. Yeah. There was something special about it. the fact that the cameras in the cockpit in the plane with them. That's why. Yeah. That's what the difference made. Um, it's something spectacular. So can't wait for that. So that's uh, Mission Impossible. Monday. Not, not seven. Not seven. Dead Reckoning Dead Part Reckoning One. Dead Reckoning yeah. Part One. Yeah. Why didn't you just call it Mission Impossible? Yeah. Uh, it takes less time that's, to that's say. That's what, that's what MI Seven. That's what I'll be calling okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk mo- in more detail yeah. once we've seen that yeah. uh, next month. Very quickly. Finally, uh, Elemental. So Pixar are very family friendly. It's probably a broader one than say Up or something. It's really for younger people all around. Mm-hmm. It's about uh, sort of magical world where all the elements uh, live together but not really they kind of live separate particularly fire doesn't fit in obviously it's Pixar there's kind of a message there about uh, uh, immigration and mm. acceptance and so on but mostly that's important it's absolutely gorgeous cute movie your family will love it it's funny and it's sweet and the guarantee I always say t- about Pixar movies for, for parents like yourself is you won't be bored there's kids movies there that you have to bra- drag your kids down you go oh my god when will this ever end this is lovely you if I go to, to see this and yeah. I'm bored and I'm pulling my hair I am holding you responsible Mr. I promise Paul you I will pay you. for your Barbie outfit myself <laughs> if you're bored I guarantee you won't be bored okay I'm holding you to that okay. I am okay that wraps it up for this morning thanks Collie for coming in as always uh, we'll talk to you next month maybe even before that yeah we might have a oh, Barbie check in will we well yeah, oh, yeah. If you want, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to pin myself down to anything. Um, you know, maybe could I squeeze myself into it? No, I'm not even going down that road. No, 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 it's not happening. It's not happening. Listen, thanks for coming in as always. We'll talk to you real soon. All right. Bye. Uh, okay, that's Colin McFadden there uh, talking us through everything that is on the big screen at the moment and what is to come. And that's where I have to wrap things up as well. We'll talk to you next Saturday morning, bright and early at 10 a.m. Up next is the Saturday Shuffle. <laughs>